A lot of people ask me why my livestock guardian dog, Toby, is not like other dogs. And I want to try to explain that one to you. And by the way, today's video is sponsored by my friends at Curiosity Stream. Hey, Mr. Toby Dog. How are you doing this morning, bud? Good to see you, get that big stretch in. How's it going, bud? If you ever happen to come to Goldshaw Farm, by the way, don't ever try to come inside of here, because Toby will probably try to bite you if you come in here without an escort. Come on, bud. Hey, buddy. And while he's a vicious killer to folks that don't know him, he will absolutely lick you to death if you do. Come on, buddy. We're gonna go let all the birds out, let's go. Release the Kraken! All right, let's go let the other quacking out, huh? Release the quacking! <laughs> For whatever reason, Carmen and her two kids have started to take up residence in the duck house. And for those of you guys wondering about the duck ramp situation, it's actually starting to work pretty darn well. They've gotten used to it. And a lot of folks made the suggestion that I should actually lower the ramp down here because it was too high for them and I think you were 100% right. So what I've actually done is taken a couple cedar boards and built like steps and the ducks tend to use it pretty well. I didn't want to dig a trench down there because my concern was that water would start to pool up and rot would happen wicked quick. But yeah, so far all the ducks are really liking it. Jemima, why are you being so cranky? You going back inside? You going to lay an egg? All right, you do you. Jemima, the old gal, is a little bit cranky, but uh, the rest of them really like it, I should say. How'd you go, chickens? I think I've hit a tipping point here on the farm where that batch of chickens is no longer my main flock of chickens. Because my main flock of chickens is now... Morning, chickens! Yeah. <laughs> This flock of chickens has really grown up. Alexander Hamilton came in and he became their new leader. You've got Blanche, you've got Dottie, you've got Pingu, kind of all also living in here from my original chicken flock. Because I'm trying to fatten up the roosters for meat birds, I try to give them a little extra food here in the mornings. I also like to keep them in here for a little bit to uh, let them have some compost. Now. Back to the topic of this video, you'll notice here, Mr. Toby Dog, he's not doing anything. He's just being chill. That's because he's got those livestock guardian instincts, and his job is just to hang out, watch over things, and be on the lookout for threats. And so you can tell he's, he's kind of looking around. He's got his nose out. He's definitely giving it a sniff every couple of minutes to just see if he picks up any new scents. But while all that's going on, he's very content to just sit around and be amongst all of his birds. I'm gonna let these guys stay in here for a few minutes before I let them out. It gives them the chance to eat without competition, as well as eat all the kitchen scraps. What's that goose walking around with? What do you got there, Goosey Goose? Got a couple members of the Parks and Recreation gang right here. Uh, some sort of root or her corn husk, maybe. Rise and shine, weird chickens. Here. Have some food. <laughs> you can see all the other birds are kind of jealous as these chickens are starting to get fed already. Don't worry, you guys. I'm going to feed you too. Just be a little patient. <laughs> Pretty soon, I got to give these guys way more space. I just want to wait for the little ones to get just a little bit bigger. You know, there's plenty of grass you guys could eat. I'm just saying. How you doing there, buddy boy? Hmm? How's it going? <laughs> Aww. You want a belly rub? Okay, there you go. Here's a belly rub. Come here, Jin. Jinny. Hey, sweetie. How are you doing? <laughs> I think you and Ginny are gonna be very good friends, but you gotta go easy on her, man. So I believe that there are three types of dogs in this world. On the one hand, you have the house dog. The dog that is meant to be a family pet. Its only job and only purpose in this world is to make you and maybe your family happy. Some dogs are really good house dogs, other dogs are not good house dogs, but regardless, they really only have one function on this earth. 
companionship for you, the human. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the wild dogs. You have wolves, you have coyotes, you have packs of dogs that have gone feral. Dogs that have limited to no connection to humans. Their purpose is to serve their pack. Their purpose is to take care of themselves and survive. Their purpose is to multiply and thrive. But then the third type of dog, which is probably my favorite type of dog, and the type of dog that Toby Dog is, is the working dog. The working dog is special, and for a farm like ours, the working dog is important because the working dog has a job here at Goldshaw Farm. You know, there's actually a whole host of different types of working dogs, and for thousands of years, man and dog have co-evolved together to form that simpatico relationship. You see what I did there? I, that was a, I think that was pretty funny. I thought that was clever. There's a whole host of different types of working dogs. You know, there are service dogs, there are police and military dogs, there are hunting dogs, there are herding dogs, and then you've got dogs like Mr. Toby Dog here, who are the livestock guardian dogs. Yeah. And really, each of those breeds of dogs has very special characteristics that are matched to their job. As you guys probably know, hounds and hound hunting has been a very hot topic here in Vermont, and particularly here at Goldshaw Farm lately. And when you look at a hound, right, it's actually driven by instinct on a couple of levels. And then it also has a couple of key characteristics that are better than other types of dogs. So for example, the hound has an incredible sense of smell. Like they can pick up tracks that are 12, 24 hours old. They can sniff, they can detect where things are going. They can make judgments based on the wind. And they are also laser focused on tracking the thing that they have been trained to track which not to get into a side tangent is kind of why I have an issue with them. But then when you think about like a herding dog, right? Like a, think of a border collie or an Australian shepherd. They actually have very strong prey drives. They are used to chasing prey. They are used to stalking prey. Like if you ever watch one of those herding dogs herd a flock or herd of animals, you can see it. They are sort of crouching down. They are looking like a predator to that animal. That animal bunches up and usually tries to move away from the dog, which is how they actually do their herding. So much of that behavior and so much of those characteristics are driven by their genetics and driven by their breeding and driven by their training. But then when you look at a dog like Toby Dog, you have to realize it's a somewhat different situation. So Toby Dog's breed is the Marema Sheepdog, and that's a very special breed with some very special characteristics and instincts, and that's why we have him here on the farm. You know, I feel so lucky to have watched Toby grow up here on the farm and watch him hone his skills and watch his instincts come alive, but then also see which parts I actually need to personally train him on. And I've got to say, actually observing and watching the animals is one of my favorite parts about the farm. And to be honest, it's one of my favorite things to do in general, which probably makes a very nice segue today to talk about our video sponsor for the day, Curiosity Stream. You see, Curiosity Stream is like Netflix for nerds, and I have just been obsessed with watching content on Curiosity Stream lately. Beyond being smart TV for your smart TV, Curiosity Stream is my favorite streaming service to watch. There's nothing Allison and I like to do more than just hang out and watch a good nature documentary on Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream has thousands of entertaining movies and TV shows on topics like nature, history, science, food, technology, and so much more. You can stream Curiosity Stream to any device for viewing it anytime, anywhere. And they have award-winning exclusives and all sorts of original programming. Like, you know, just the other night I was watching The Secrets of Bumblebees and the cinematography on this film was amazing and I learned so much about the humble bumble. If you want to get Curiosity Stream, you can get it now for only $14.99 for the entire year. Yes, you heard me right. That's the entire year. Amazing content, only $14.99 for the entire year. Just click the link down below and use the special Goldshaw offer code and you can enjoy my absolute favorite streaming service out there, CuriosityStream. 
So the Maremma Sheepdog, which is Toby's breed, it originated in Italy, and they used to use the breed of dog to protect sheep from wolves. So the dogs would live out there in the mountains with the sheep. The legend is that they were actually bred to be white so that the farmer at night could tell the difference between a wolf and their dog. Because if you look at a dog like Toby Dog, if he was like a gray or brown or black, I could easily see mistaking him for a wolf in the middle of the night, especially those smaller, lighter framed European wolves. Toby's breed of dog is related to a lot of the other livestock guardian dogs you breed, right? So the Great Pyrenees is like the French version of the Maremma. The Maremma is the Italian side. While they look very similar, there are some slight different characteristics with them. And as I was recently researching the idea of adding a livestock guardian dog to the farm, it really was thinking about some of the characteristics that the Maremma had. That was what really motivated me to bring Toby onto the farm. Those characteristics include patience, a calmness, and then a ferocity when it comes to the strange and unusual. Like the way Toby works is he will be absolutely chill when he feels like everything around here is like totally normal and totally in good order and he's used to everything on the farm but when something new shows up like the other day i took delivery of about 50 plus bales of hay and was moving around with my tractor and the truck that was delivering the hay was here toby was on high alert and he was barking and he was he was definitely on edge and that's because there was a lot of new and different stuff he wasn't used to seeing the hay bales he wasn't used to seeing the truck and he's always a little skittish when i'm out here on the tractor because he doesn't see that every day so he was barking he was driving his animals up back to the uh, main animal housing part of the farm because he wanted them all close to him. It was some real hardcore livestock guardian type stuff that he was doing. And, and that's why he's so good at his job. You know, I've commented on this before in the past where people often have this misperception where they think that a dog like Toby's job is to fight off things like coyotes. And that's absolutely not the case. Toby's job is not to fight coyotes. Toby's job is to scare the coyotes away and keep his flock safe. What that usually looks like is you'll find him barking all over the place, you'll find him peeing all over the place and marking his territory. Anytime he hears a stray movement or noise in the woods, or he smells a foreign animal like a dog or a coyote or a bobcat, he freaks out and goes into high alert. Which for some of you, that's why I'm so adamantly against having hounds on our farm. It's because that hound is a disruption here to what's happening on my farm even if they're not coming into direct contact. And it really is incredible to me to watch everybody out here on the pasture interacting. Like, you know, you see the geese out here grazing in the morning. You see Toby Dog. I don't know if you can see him, but he's up by the goose house there. Standing watch, making sure everything's in good order. And every once in a while when that's happening, he'll snap too when he hears that stray noise. And that's because he was built for this type of job. Oh, hey, look at this. Carmen's two kids are really starting to go out on their own. I don't even see Carmen anywhere near here, but the two kids are wandering around doing their thing. They've definitely grown up. I'm pretty sure the white one is a rooster and the brown one is a hen. And the white rooster, I'm pretty sure is like a leghorn uh, cross. I have no idea what the brown hen is, it's, but it's a very interesting looking bird. But I digress. You know, if you look at Toby's breed, the Maremma, they're actually used all over the world right now. One of the places that they're used the most is actually in Australia. People use Maremmas all the time to guard their chicken flocks, or chooks as the Aussies say it. But then there's also been situations, like I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Oddball, where they use Maremmas to guard a, a breed of penguin that's down there in Australia. Several years ago, this breed of penguin was actually getting decimated by foxes that were coming in and eating their young and killing them off. And so some scientists were trying to figure out a way to protect them. And then they also looked at a lot of the farmers who were using the Maremma to protect their chickens, and that gave them an idea. And so to this day, you will find in Australia, livestock guardian dogs guarding penguins. Which is why when I was trying to make the decision of what breed of dog to get here on the farm, I really gravitated towards the Maremma because they had such a good track record with poultry, which for the most part, that's what we need to guard here at Goldshaw Farm. Now, I think the other thing about working dogs that a lot of folks don't understand is that the working dog needs to have a job. Like if that dog doesn't have a job, it kind of goes a little crazy. That's why I've heard many stories of people getting Maremmas as house pets. And if they didn't have it in the exact right situation, the Maremma can be very destructive, the Maremma can be very disruptive, um, lots of barking, lots of property damage. If that dog doesn't have a job, it can be a real problem. Toby, on the other hand, 
He really does have a job, and I think that keeps him out of trouble. You know, another criticism with Toby that I often get is that, you know, I leave him outside 24 seven. He doesn't go come in the house. He doesn't live inside. And really, if I actually tried to do that, I think he'd be pretty miserable. You see, number one, he's got this weatherproof coat which really makes him well suited for our cold Vermont winters. It means he will shed like crazy in your house if you bring him in too. So that's why I leave him outside and that's why I've actually given him like outdoor accommodations. And so I've actually, as you guys have seen this saga, I built that dog house in the spring. The geese took it over. So I built this like little paddock area and now he has a doggy door. And so now if Toby wants to come inside, hey Toby, come on. It's just right in through that doggy door and then he's able to come in here. He has the little house if he really wants to get out of the weather and get protected from the wind and the rain and the snow. There's even a little second story where Toby's best friend Pablo can go live. And you like it up there, don't you buddy, huh? Some of you guys are gonna wonder why I use straw instead of like a bed. And the reason is a pet bed, which is often made of things like cotton, when it gets wet, can actually get really cold and, and be very bad for the dog. Meanwhile, straw is nice and absorbent and actually stays nice and toasty and warm. And so Toby likes to bed down in straw more than anything else. You know, oftentimes I will find he doesn't end up even sleeping inside this house. And he usually likes to actually go inside the goose house here because this is just one big room that keeps him out of the wind and the rain and the snow. And it's just a floor covered in straw. Well, looks like we got another goose egg. They keep coming. It's like one every day or two. I'm not sure if people would be interested to see this. I still have never eaten a goose egg because I'm afraid I might be allergic to it because I'm allergic to duck eggs. I don't know, maybe I'll make a video of me eating this egg. You know, the other thing that Toby will do is he will actually play peacekeeper. If he sees the different animals causing trouble, he will usually intervene and make sure that things don't get out of hand. Like, I think he was very watchful right there in that conflict between Molly Barncat and those geese. Hey, Carmen. Look, you're without your kids, you're free. You're an empty nester, quite literally. You know, I will admit, I get a fair amount of uh, hate mail from folks talking about how I keep Toby and how I keep him outside. But I gotta say, every time I read those emails, I appreciate the place that some of these folks are coming from, but I have to also respectfully say, no, that's not right, because when it comes down to it, working dogs are just built different. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna make you guys friends eventually. And just to show you how different Toby is, my friends over at Sunday Riley sent Toby some birthday cookies. Watch what happens when I try to feed it to him. Number one, look how obedient he's being. Sit. Good boy. Livestock guardian dogs usually aren't that obedient because they're bred to be very independent. Okay, buddy boy, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sit, sit, sit. You want this nice cookie? You want this nice cookie? There you go. Enjoy. Now this is where it gets interesting. Watch what happens, I'm gonna follow him. While he's very happy to get the cookie, you can even see it in his tail wag, he really just wants to guard and protect that cookie. He doesn't even wanna eat it. You're such a goofball, you know that kid? He's not gonna eat it yet. He's just gonna spend some time with it. Sniff at it. And if one of these chickens ever dares to come near it, oh look out. 